So welcome again uh, to the course on uh, optimization techniques for DLA, VLSI circuits and at present we are going through the module on verification. So uh, in the last two lectures, the lecture set we have seen that basically the major problem for any kind of verification or handling any kind of systems where actually you have to go for a state space model, then actually the size of the state space becomes so large because it actually tries to blow up in the order of exponential complexity in the number of system variables. So, that was the major problem or the bottleneck for even for testing as well as well verification. So, whenever something you have to do or some automated procedure you have to execute on a system where you have to model the system such that each, such that each state or the set of states used to represent the system is in terms of the state variables, then actually it may blow up leading to the state explosion problem and everything boils down that you can solve only for toy examples. And mainly in our course as we know it is on optimization so that we can handle very large systems. So, in the last two lecture series we have seen that basically if you say, uh, say a state space or a simple finite state machine or a state with exponential number of combinations of states are there, basically it correlates something to the binary decision tree that for a given set of variables, Boolean variables you have to grow exponentially in the order of 2 to the power n in the number of variables. Like we have one left child for true, right child for uh, sorry left child for false, right child for true and you have to keep on doing it till all the levels are explored. So, that was the basic problem of explicit enumeration. Then in the two lectures, last two lecture series we have seen a very important data structure called binary decision diagrams. There we have seen basically we can compress by eliminating all sort of redundancies and without any loss or in any quality of solution. Basically if you take if you say that I have a system with a 100 state variables, actually the number of states will be much much less than 2 to the power 100 because there are lot of combinations which are never used in real practice. So, basically BDD tries to leverage on that fact that eliminate all the non, all the redundant parts and we actually explicitly model only the uh, set which are absolutely required that is there is no redundancy and then we can see that the compression level is more than 99 percent or above. Then we have seen some additional more advanced versions like additional um, arithmetic decision diagrams, high level decision diagrams which can even handle much larger circuits because they work at a higher level of abstraction. But now the next three lectures basically that symbolic model checking and bounded model checking, here what we are going to do because as we told in the last class if you remember that already uh, although HLDD or arithmetic decision diagrams can handle very large circuits because they go for modeling at the abstract level that is the RTL level, but still the research is going on that how can you go for good canonical representation, how can you find out good model checking or that is the labeling algorithms if you are going in the model systems as in terms of high level decision diagrams rather not in the form of a bookie automata or a finite state machine. Because all the algorithms which we have seen in lecture 1 in case of CTN and LTL model checking or rather if you tell me the ATPG in terms of D algorithms, we are very well the algorithms are very well developed if you consider the gate level modeling or explicit modeling or you can say that the binary bit level modeling. Once we go to higher levels of abstraction such algorithms are still in the development phase. So, uh, we, are, we are not going to focus too much on again on HLDD or arithmetic decision diagram to use them for verification because this is more on a research topic. Rather what we will try to do is that rather we will again go back to the bit level because that is where all the strong algorithms of model checking are available, but then we will see then you have already seen that if you are going for a bookie automata level modeling in the state space state space level then the model itself is so large that labeling or model checking becomes a invisible job. So, in this 4 and 5 lecture series we are going to see something called a symbolic model checking that is what we are going to do in this case. In this case basically we will try to use the concept of BDD and we will try to model sequential circuits or because you know that bookie automata is nothing but some kind of a uh, finite uh, some kind of a state machines with atomic propositions labeled in the states etcetera. But again the main problem of CTL or LTL model checking was that the bookie automata as it depends on explicit state enumeration the model itself becomes so large that labeling itself become a very difficult problem because of the size of the state space and we cannot go beyond a large circuit. So, what we are going to do in symbolic model checking we will not explicitly design the finite state machine or the state machine corresponding to the bookie automata. Rather we will try to represent the whole automata in terms of binary decision diagram. So, of course, it will be a very very complex data structure and then we will try to go for the labeling algorithms or rather the model checking on the BDD itself rather than enumerating them in the state space model that is the bookie automata. Again to sum up what we will do bookie automata very large very difficult to do model checking. So, we will represent bookie automata in terms of 
by my decent diagrams. Once we are able to do that, then we have to try to find out how modeling algorithms can be applied to such BDDs. Basically, the idea is the algorithms are very well developed. That same algorithms which we have seen for leveling the states, like there exists for all in all paths in every state. So, all those formulas. Well, the model checking form, temporal formulas used for model checking, we see that we label the different states. So, in case of high level decision diagram, arithmetic decision diagram, these labeling algorithms are still in the development phase. But fortunately, the if you go for a bit level representation and then convert it into binary decision diagram, that is representation of the bookie automata or state machines in terms of binary decision diagrams, fortunately those labeling algorithms can be very easily adapted in terms of BDDs. That is actually called symbolic model checking because we will not explicitly model the states, rather we will model them in terms of BDDs and then we will go for the labeling algorithm that is why the term called symbolic and fortunately those labeling algorithms and model checking can be very easily adapted to BDD structure. That is what again is the very beautiful thing about BDDs. But if we talk about high level decision diagrams or arithmetic decision diagrams, those labeling algorithms are not very straightforward and still people are doing work to find out how they can be adapted. Anyway, let us come down to the top uh, means uh, lecture which we are going to see today. Basically, with what two things we have to see. First thing, because already we have seen BDD in a very simple form. That is, there is a binary, there is a Boolean function. How it can be represented in terms of BDDs? That means, if there is a combinational circuit, how can we design it? Now, basically, now we will see how to adapt this whole thing so that we can model finite state machines. That is the first thing we are going to learn. Then, next we are going to see that how the labeling model checking algorithms can be applied on those BDDs so that you can do model checking in the BDD version rather than in the explicit model representation of the bookie automata that is what we are going to see. So, we know that all uh, we can represent boolean functions by ROBDDs the combinational circuit. So, that is why uh, uh, of combinational circuits and BDDs are about direct correlation, but that does not actually directly apply for the sequential circuit because in combinational circuit the output depends only on the input of the circuit. So, it is just a combinational cloud input and output very easily you can make the BDDs. So, combinational circuits directly correlation to the BDD, but in sequential circuits we have to slightly adapt the philosophy because the output of the sequential circuit depends on two things is the input as well as the present state and again the output that is there is basically two types of outputs in sequential circuits one is the next state and one is the primary outputs. So, basically you have to capture these two things. So, output will be depending on the present uh, present state as well as the primary inputs. So, that you can think as a combinational cloud like if something happens like this if this is the register there will be a combinational cloud this will be your input okay, and basically and again some output from this and there will be another combinational cloud this will be your output and this is your basically next state. So, this part is basically you can think as a so, the other part you can think as a combinational cloud that is the output. It will depend on the primary inputs basically and as well as the output of this present state that is the present state and together the combinational cloud will make the primary output. So, this is a combinational cloud directly you can use it in terms of BDDs, but only one thing is that you have to just think that there is another set of output which is over here that is it decides on the next state that is the register. So, this is again a combinational cloud. So, these two parts you have to model using BDDs so that we can model the entire sequential circuit and also uh, you have to also take care of the fact that the sequential circuit move from state 1 to state 3 and so forth so that sequential behavior has to be modeled. So, basically in sequential circuits you have to model two things the states and secondly the transitions. So, both of them has to be modeled in terms of BDDs then your basically job is done. So, that is we are going to see in combination circuits direct mapping sequential circuits is two level first you have to model the states and then you have to model the transition in terms of BDDs then your job is going to, done, to be done. So, sequential circuit slightly non trivial I should not call it non trivial slightly non straightforward and we are going to first see that how sequential circuits can be modeled in terms of BDDs rather RO BDDs and once it is done then we will see that we have done our basic background of modeling the sequential circuits or sequential systems which are in terms of state space that was the killing factor in verification because the system becomes very large because the uh, uh, verification complexity is exponential in the number of state variables and it is not exponential in the terms of the size of the formula because for each part of the temporal formula to be verified we just have to go for leveling. So, it is just the graph traversal. So, somehow if we can reduce the graph size or the model size then our basically job is done. So, that is what we are going to do first we will model sequential circuits using BDD. So, once that is done your background job is done now on that BDD we will try to go for this label, labeling algorithms. So, we will go step by step. So, basically this is the slide which I have told you. So, sequential circuits are e expressed in terms of 
state transition diagrams. So, we have some inputs and some outputs and some variables. So, uh, apart from if you compare to combinational circuit, sequential circuit is some inputs, outputs and some state variables. So, this is the additional things which you have to model. The state variables can be either the, the state variables either represent the current state or the next state. So, there are two kind of variables input that is the next state and the present state. The next state depends on the current state and input variables and the output the output depends on the present state as well as the input. So, these are very well known digital design fundamentals which you can do it. So, again this step is very very important. The next step we have to represent using VDDs and the transitions also we have to represent in terms of VDDs. Therefore, the states as well as the transitions they have to be represented in terms of VDDs then your job is done. So, in combination circuit it is just one step here it will be two steps as you are going to see. So, and then basically with this philosophy we will see that how we can model sequential circuits or state machines also using VDDs that is what is the idea. But the basic philosophy is written in this slide which I am telling you orally is depicted in this slide that basically you have to model the states and you have to model the transitions. So, a simple figure I am showing you. So, we will just try to motivate this. So, this is your simple state machine. You can see the transitions. So, there are four states. So, two variables will be there. So, let us first enumerate them. So, basically this is your enumeration S0, S1, S2 and S4. So, you can see S0 is 00, S1 is 10 sorry 0 1, 10 0 and 1 1. So, this is very straightforward. Now, what is we are going to do here is that we make super set of these things. because as where the philosophy will come as I told you that basically the exponential number of states are never required to represent any model. Only the required states are used to model the circuit. So, what we do or a system. So, basically we first go for a superset kind of a representation that is as I tell you what is that what do I mean about that is something like this that is state S0 or S1. If only these two states are there this is the 0 0 or 0 1. Similarly, S0 and S2 is 0 0 or 1 0 and last one will be your full set that is equal to 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1. So, basically I am enumerating all the power set of the set of states that is all possible combinations. So, in fact I have not shown S0, S1 and S2 and S3 that is obvious basically this is the four states and then they are the all the combinations. So, what we will do basically we will first make the super set of the set of states. So, this combination will here it is depicted to show, but basically you have to pick up only those states which are relevant for the design and then we will try to represent them using VDDs and the transitions. So, first what is the goal? You have to pick up only those states which are relevant for our discussion. One thing you have to understand that also in case of a system design, we draw only the relevant states, but when you are trying to represent a finite state machines, it actually blows up because it is not a compressed diagram. Here what is happening, here also we are doing the same thing that only the relevant states we are bringing into picture, but we will represent them into BDDs uh, through BDDs. So, all the redundant elimination uh, redundant states which are not there basically redundant structures that is the states which are not represented in the systems will be eliminated out in the BDD representation. That is the subtle difference that if you are going for a simple finite state machine representation, even if the number of states are limited because we draw only the practical states or which are the reachable states or in, in fact basically which are the states under consideration, but if you are using a normal algorithm which is not in a form of BDDs, even the states which are not relevant also comes into the enumeration process because it is a simple state space enumeration like a binary decision tree. But if we represent in terms of BDDs, we will represent only the relevant states to us and the other parts which are irrelevant because they are neither reachable, they do not, do not, they does not matter in the computation. So, it will be happening something like this as we have already seen that if both the paths lead to 0 that is both from some variable x if 0 and 1 both has the same value as the output then this state gets eliminated. So, whatever states is not relevant that we do not model explicitly basically get eliminated in this manner as, as told you that that is why the idea of BDD. We will take a subset of the states as you have seen like for example, if only S0 and N, S1 are relevant to that we will represent this Boolean function as a in terms of BDD. So, it will be a very compressed data structure, but if we go for explicit state enumeration. So, we will have only S0 and S1 say. So, it is actually something called 0 0 and this is 0 1, but the other states which are non relevant like 1 uh, 1 0 and 1 1 will still be represented in the uh, means all in, in the algorithms which we will trying for state uh, for some sort of all sort of algorithms. These two will also try to put their presence as it happens in case of a binary decision tree, because in binary decision tree if you have a variable x. 0 may be say 0 and this side may also say is also 0, but we will have to 
bed to explicit leaf nodes because x0 is also 0, x equal to 1 is also 0, but you still explicitly enumerate. Actually, x is a redundant state a variable, would not require it. Be, but if we go for a simple state modeling, such things will try to appear. But if you are going for a BDDN based representation, then those redundancies will be gone. So, what is the first job? All these power set of the states are done and then we will take some relevant state set which is required for the modeling and only that will be represented in terms of BDD. So, we will get a very compressed structure. Like for example, if you see S1 and S2 and S1, S2 and S3. So, say for example, for certain reason these are the state sets which are relevant. So, S1 is what? So, S1 is nothing, S1 and S, S1 is uh, 0, S1 is 1, uh, S1 is basically nothing but S1 and S2. So, this is 0, 1 and this is 1, 0. So, this is basically represented by this BDD. So, if you see uh, x 1 is equal to 0 and x 1 x 2 equal to 1, we are landing it to 1. So, it is actually representing this state. Similarly, x 1 equal to 1 and x 2 equal to 0 basically is enumerating this. So, these are the two transitions which are the lines I have drawn represent the two uh, basically these two transitions is represented by the BDD. Similarly, if you are considering S1, S2 and S3, you are going to get this BDD structure. Because S1 corresponds to 0, 1, S2 corresponds to 1, 0, I have drawn the paths and showed that they are leading to 0. So, basically if you see S1, S2 and S3, the uh, BDD is so small. And But, if you see S1, S2 and S3, anyway such uh, this one is what? Uh, S1. Anyway, all the enumerations I have not done basically, it will be so 2 to the power 4, it will be 16. So, all these I have not drawn, but obviously you can find out that it will have 3 terms <coughs> uh, uh, because S0 will be equal to x1 bar x2 bar, this one will be basically x1 uh, one, 0 1 x1 one, x2 plus uh, this is for uh, then x 1 x 1. Huh. So, this was going to be the expression for this. So, you can see that is the size is quite large corresponding to the BDD representation. And you have to think of not only four variables, if the system is very large, basically you will also have say x y, x y 1, x y 2, so many number of elements will be added over there if you think that the number of variables are very large. So, the expression will be very large if you are just considering three states, but actually all other variables if present are basically redundant. So, a binary representation will eliminate all this and you are going to get a very compressed structure. So, what we, what we have learned till now that basically we will have the state set which is relevant for us and we will represent using BDDs. The advantage will be all the redundance variables which are not uh, relevant to represent the present states will be eliminated and we are getting going to get a very compressed representation of the state set. This is only a fourth two variables, so this is not obvious, but as I told you, if you have 100 variables say and we are only in interested in these two states, maybe the all other additional variables like which will have 0, 0, 0, all combinations basically say 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2 dot 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 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, this is 0, 1, this one will remain same, all will be embedded in the state enumeration representation, but they are redundant because they cancel out and whenever we go for a BDD based representation, we get a very small diagram basically. So, that is why the first job is we represent the relevant state sets using BDD and we get a compressed structure. Now, we have to represent the other part which is basically nothing but your transitions. So, what we have to go for transitions? Basically, in transitions, if these are your variables, we have to have another set of variables by the primes. Now, why do you want to do it? Because basically, x this non prime value will represent the present state and the, this one will be represent the basically uh, the next state. Because as I, as I told you that we have three stuff in case of consequential circuits, input, present state, output and sorry, uh, present state, next state, inputs and one is the primary output. So, primary output as of now we are not dealing with directly because primary output is a combinational circuit, we have already shown. So, inherently basically you can say that we have inputs, present state and next state. Output also you can think as an element for the time being we are not making the things more complicated. So, therefore, this one will uh, all the va state variables will be representing the present state and the prime versions will be representing the next state. So, we have to just duplicate the state variable size. Now, we will see how to do this. Now, we have to how do you represent the transitions. So, I will just uh, go by, by the theory let us say we are looking at this. So, basically if you see S0 to S1 is a transition. If you look uh, I will just give you one example it will be clear. 
So you can see from S0 to S1, there's a transition. How do you model it? Just remember, S0 to S1, S1 to S3, S2 to S3, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, and some 5 transitions are there. We have to enumerate each of the transitions first. So let us take the example of S0 to S1. So how do you do that? Let me zoom it for you. So here you have seen the, the variables are x1, x2, and x1 prime and x2 prime. So basically, x prime are the next state. So S0 means x1 bar x2 bar. They are the present state. What is the next state? Next state is S1 that is equal to 0, 1. That is x prime bar x2 bar. That is basically nothing but it goes from 0, 0 to 0, 1. So that is that is equal, this is equal to x1 prime x2 prime and this is x2, x1 prime bar and this is x2 prime. So that is what is represented by this formula. Similarly, x2 to x3 is what? x2 is basically this figure. Huh? So x2 is nothing but x1 x2 bar. And where it is going? x3. That is x1 bar x2 bar. That is 1 1. So you are representing this by this transition. So whatever transition is very simple. This one will be corresponding to the state encoding for the present state. The distribution state will be the state encoding for the next state. And but you have to have a prime version. So this way S0 to S1, S2, S3, S0, S3, S1, S3. Whatever transition you will have, you have to actually enumerate in this form. And then basically you have to do an op because all the such transitions are present and represent using a BDD, your job is basically done. So that is what is the idea. So you take a set of all the transitions, present state, destination state, present state, destination state. You represent in terms of the binary variables or the Boolean state variables, present state will be non-prime, next state will be prime and you make a all representation and that is going to be the BDD representation. So just you can see, again I have just given this, this slide, you can just see over here that how transitions have been represented. So I think we are, they have missed S3 to S3, so that will be equal to X1 bar, X, sorry, X1, X2 and X1 bar, X2 bar. So this will be representing this transition. So this we have not shown over, that is the stealth loop. So very simple. So just you have to enumerate all these things and then basically you have to represent. So what will going to happen is there were 5 transitions, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 transitions are there. So basically the 5 terms will be there 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this one, this one if you look at this corresponds to S3, S3 that is the self loop. Similarly all other terms can be found out. So basically this is your Boolean function which corresponds to basically your transitions. So if you, again it is written that as there are 4 states, so if it is a fully connected graph, there will be 16 possible transitions. So if you are going for a flat representation in the binary decision tree philosophy, it will be again exponentially blowing up. But we all know that all graphs, practical graphs are very, very sparse. So in this case, I have taken a practical example, uh, sorry a dummy example, so you have at least 5 transitions. But in a practical system where you have very large state graphs, the number of transitions are much, 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 much smaller than 2 to the power or n square where n is the number of states. Basically, if there are n variables, 2 to the power n is all possible states and the number of all possible transitions are 2 to the power 2n, that is the square. But in real life, you will find out that this number of states and number of transitions are much, much lower than basically the number of correspond to 2 to the power n. That means, if there are 100 variables, number of states will be very much lower co compared to 2 to the power 100 and the number of transitions will also be drastically, drastically lower than 2 to the power 200 basically. That is why in BDD we model only these important transitions or the transitions under consideration and if you are using a binary tree to represent it, well, even if the unnecessary information will also go in and it will things make the things blow up, but in binary decision diagram representation, it will cramp up, eliminate the redundancies, that is it will only, uh, model only this terms that also if there is some redundancy among them they will be eliminated and then we will have to have a very compressed representation of the transitions. So now what we have, we this is basically your uh, this BDD if you look it is the BDD corresponding to this transition. Let us trace one transition. So x1 equal to 1 and if you see x bar equal to x2 bar equal to 1 and this is one transition. Let that, that, that means I am talking about S3, S3. So what is S3, S3 is x0, x1. X, sorry, x1, x2, x1 bar, x2 bar. So that transition should lead to 1. So if you see x1 equal to 1, then x1 bar equal to 1 and x2 bar equal to 1. You are going to a 1. In fact, you see here also we are, even, even after this compression, still we are saving on one variable. That is we are saving on x1, x1 bar, x2 bar. So we are saving on this variable. So in this path actually corresponds to this transition. 
1 1 1 basically this x1 bar is sorry uh, which is saved x1 sorry sorry this x1 is saved sorry not this one we are saving actually x1 x1 bar x2 bar so x1 is there x2 this is the variable we are actually saving to represent this transition so x1 1 x1 bar 1 x2 bar 1 the answer is a 1 in fact we do not require x2 to explicitly represent this transition so even after just instead of 2 to the power 16 possible transitions we can just represent by this function using bdd and in that also if you compare the number of paths the, the number of variables are 4 into 4 4, 4, 4, 4, 16, 5, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 20, but we will not find 20 transitions in this binary decision diagrams. So, not only the 16 possible transitions, even each of these explicit terms in this expression are also not explicitly required to model in the BDD because again we can go for a cramp representation. So, these transitions basically S0, S3, S3 bar is represented by this, and here also the term basically X2 is eliminated. So, you can see basically we have a very compress represent for the state subset as well as we have very compress representation for the transitions. So, now we have represented the model of any system in terms of state machines because everything has memory because you cannot have any system practically designed without having states. So, we have represent states using uh, BDDs how by modeling the state set subset and modeling the transitions in a very cramped manner using BDD. So, this brings us to the halfway that we have given a very nice platform because the again the BDD that is why I told you one of the most beautiful data structures I have personally seen in my life is binary decision diagram. Whole VLSI CAD industry is standing on this data structure. People have again moved away from this that is true, uh, but that is what is the founding stone. So, basically you have seen that this again this BDD is coming to a boon to represent state machines states and transitions in a very compressed manner the system is represented and we have already discussed that only the state modeling is problem once the state is modeled this model checking that is your labeling algorithm is not that complex but now we will see that unlike for high level decision diagrams etc labeling is very very straightforward using a binary decision diagram that is what we are going to see now that is actually called a symbolic model checking why is name symbolic because we are not going to explicitly represent the bookie automata or the state machine in terms of FSM kind of a structure. Basically, we are going to use a BDD representation and we will go for the labeling. So, this is quite long. So, we will today we will do half of it and in the next class we will try to basically complete it. So, we have seen that the uh, CTL is a signal model checking algorithm or LTL model checking algorithm already seen. Basically, it is nothing but a labeling algorithm. So, if the graph is very big, that is the input space is input graph is very big, you are going to kill it because the state space is basically killing it. Now, what we have done? Because the complexity of the algorithm is related to the Kripke structure. Basically, this is nothing but your system model. So, for complex system, the FSM is prohibitively big. We have already seen that if you have n variables, it becomes 2 to the power n, and if you are going to keep a binary, uh, binary decision tree kind of a representation, that is a flat representation, everything is going to blow up. It is 2 to the power n, and the number of basically your transitions can be order of 2 to the power 2 n, that is the square of it, and everything is going to die down. So, basically, what so, uh, that is why basically the state space ex exploration problem in automatic verification basically we are still going at a very low level circuits or low level systems. Truly speaking even with the BDD we have still not actually able to reach the so called quote unquote the uh, NOC verification, SOC verification as an entire block basically because as I told you still the BDD is a bit level and the binary decision diagrams at the higher level like HLDD, ZBDD etcetera are there. But still the labeling algorithms are not been well developed in those cases. So, still with BDD we can take we have taken the verification to a much much higher level, but still when you are going for system level verification like NOCs, SOCs we are doing in parts and parcels like we may be verifying the router, we may be verifying one, one core, but it is very difficult to verify the entire uh, NOC or SOC taking each details into picture. So, that is a very very important research challenge and many people are working towards it. So, anyway let us come back to our problem again. So, what we are basically doing? We are representing the FSM in a very compact manner using from ROBDDs. So, that the representation of the Kripke structure has become very efficient and now what we are trying to do? We will try to basically develop all the labeling algorithms like EAX, all path in future etcetera. All those how can we do basically on the BDD representation rather than on the state based representation. So, as this is done symbolically, so the name called symbolic model checking. So, now we are going to dive into that. Again, let us take a simple 
structure. So basically, explicitly we have to show the structure because otherwise we will not be able to appreciate the fact. But again, from the previous experience, nobody is again find first going to make this a finite state machine and then going to make the BDD. That nobody is going to do. From the system, we directly make a BDD representation. But for illustration, basically, we are going to have first a crypto structure like this. And then, basically, very one important because first I have told that first we have a BDD structure to represent a subset of sets. Now, why is it? Because we know that in model checking, we may say that some atomic proposition say phi is true only at a state and maybe it is true only at a state. How do you represent it? That is by representing a subset of states. That is why the first goal is to represent a subset of states. So, in this case, in the example, they are saying whatever is the atomic proposition is basically say that it is true say S1 or whatever sorry X1 some atomic proposition called x 1 p whatever it is raining or heater is on some proposition which is true only at state 2 that is what is the assumption basically right. So, uh, this is the structure just keep it in mind and we are assuming that some atomic proposition which we are taking into picture is says the x 1 is true only in state s 2. Now, we will try to go for the uh, model checking or labeling in this structure and we will today we will see only, only for one operation and like E x today we are going to study only for E x and other operations we will see in the next class because this is actually it is a quite long to visualize how it happens. So, what basically happens? So, in a model checking algorithm we have a crypt structure and a CTL formula. So, now the problem is with the complexity of M. So, now we have we will bring it down by BDD representation. So, what we do? We know that uh, for checking this, we have to model the sub or label the sub formulas of phi in the states. So, basically that means what uh, for initially we will have some states where the formula that is or sub formula is true at some of the states that is the first thing. at some of the states this is going to be true. So, in BDD representation first we are going to represent those states as a subset already we have seen how to represent subsets in BDDs. So, we will represent as a subset then we will be then from the labeling function of the Kripke structure, we know the states in which the atomic proposition is true. That means, first we have to label the states which are directly which are having this as true, that is what we are doing. So, these states can be represented as a subset of, sub this state subset is represented as BDD. So, what is says? The first statement says that we are having M, the Kripke structure in BDD form and formula phi. Then what we do? Phi is, then phi is broken down into atomic propositions and then we will find out in which states the phi is true that will actually that subset will be representing as a BDD. Then basically we have to find after that things will change for different formulas. If it is E x some algorithm will be there, E a f some other algorithm will be there, E u some other algorithm will be there, but first stage we will find out this set of states and represent is BDD where the phi is true. Then basically today we will see about E x. So, but basically what we do in E x basically if there is a state and there is a state where phi is true this is going to have value of E x phi is going to be true over here, because all such parent states has to be marked with E x phi if in the adjacent state the phi variable holds true that we all have already we have seen it. So, what we are basically going to do first, first we are going to enumerate all those states which are having the value of proposition phi true that subset of states will be represented by BDD. Then we will find out an algorithm in terms of BDD which will find out these states from where there is a transition to all these states where phi is going to be true that is what is being written over this one. Now, we will elaborately see that algorithm just what I have told you this is written in the slide. So, you can read off this anyway the notes will also be uploaded. So, we are going to this one. So, one very important function which are going to uh, talk to the is pre of x that is actually the representation therefore, that means uh, basically this is a set of states and we are going to find out this is, a, this is a x is a set of states with some special property in this case these are the sets where phi is going to be true. And then basically pre of x means all the set of states which actually have a transition direct transition to the states x which has a special property maybe the x is where the phi is true. So, this one actually represents states from where there is a transition to a state x where some property holds and this there exists. So, uh, there exists one transition it is fine. But when you are going to for all operation the same thing, but all the transition from such states to would, would ho should hold for the states where this property phi is true. Uh, this for all and the first one is for x that means, if all transitions lead to states where phi is true then this is going to be true that means, this is such a such of states will be found out and if you require an existential property then other paths may go anywhere I am not bothered, but there should be at least one transition to a state x where the phi holds. So, anyway first we are going to see about it. So, what we are going to have? We are going to have a BDD 
where x is 2. That is the first thing, first statement if you see what we are trying to do. We are trying to find out all those states. We are going to find out BDDs in terms of BDD state B x. So, B x is the subset of states where x is true. That is in our case maybe the proposition phi is true. Because we, in a given state maybe only two, are, two states are there where the uh, proposition phi is true. Those two state subset will be represented in terms of BDD. Then we, all, we should also have in hand the uh, transition relation or the transition level BDD or the BDD representing the transitions. Then what you are going to do? Then basically rename the variables of B x to their prime versions. So, there is one BDD basically that is BDD x which corresponds to all the states where the phi is true. Then we will actually just label the, so say let us this let this BDD state is one state where the phi is true. That is say represented by B x. Now, we will make B x prime. So, what do you mean by B x prime? That means, it will virtually make this x prime that means, it will virtually make something like this. That is the next state where phi is true. B x means present state where phi is true. And if we make B x prime, then it will make a dummy structure like this or next state where phi is true. Then we are going to make this operation called apply. Apply dot transition into B x. That means, what we are going to do in the next step. So, we have the B x bar means something like this, where phi is true. Then we are going to take the B d d of the transition structure that is called by B arrow mark. Then if you are going to make a dot product of B transition into the next state where this one, you are going to have a structure like this. Say this is x. You are going to have a transition structure like this. That is all the transitions in which the next state is x prime that is where phi is true. So, this operation apply dot b x, b x bar basically gives you all the transitions which are of this form. Present state there exists at least one transition to the next state where phi is true. Because you are taking the entire set of transitions dotting it product that is dot product with something like this. You are making a dot product with something like this. That means, you are now going to have some transitions like this one which will be outer output of this. After that what we are going to do, then basically now we are having something called x and we are going to have something called x bar where phi is true. This you are going to get after f this one is there. Now what you are going to do? Now somehow we have to basically eliminate out because we are going to have required something like this. So, our transition is represented as we have seen it is represented in terms of some x 1, x 1 may be x 2 bar something like the dot x 1 bar and x 2 bar something like this. So, we have already seen this. Now, what we require? We finally require this. We have to eliminate this part has to be eliminated because we want to find x where in next state the phi is equal to true. That means, this one basically this one this is going to give you the transitions. So, transitions in BDD as you have seen will have all the prime variables and the non prime variables. Now, we have to somehow eliminate this part that is you have to eliminate this prime version. So, we should only keep this. So, basically our operation called exists will actually do it for you. Now, what is the operation? This is very simple just we have to just look at the philosophy slightly because already we have discussed in the operations of BDD that there is something called a restrict operation. So, whenever we say restrict 1 x B f that means you are going to get the B f B I means BDD if some variable x is equal to 1 and also if we say that restrict something called 0 then you are going to get a BDD where x is equal to 0 and this is a BDD where x is restricted to 1 that means how the BDD will look if x is equal to 1. Then we can also make a BDD, x is some variable, you can call it y z or whatever, that BDD when y is equal to 0. That is also possible very well. So, this BDD corresponds to the fact that when x is equal to 0, what is going to the BDD look like? We can have another BDD when x is equal to 0. So, we will have a BDD where x is equal to 0, we will have one BDD called when x is equal to 1. So, there are we are fixing some variables to either 0 and 1, and we are trying to find out how the BDD looks. Now, if I make a OR of it. Then what you are going to get that is actually called the add. So, you are having one BDD where x is equal to 0, we are having one BDD when x is equal to 1 and we are oring it. Then uh, directly from Boolean representation we will find out the BDD which is irrespective of x. That means, uh, this one if I x equal to 1, if I or with x equal to 0, the resultant will be something which is non dependent on x. That means, the, the sub part of the BDD which has nothing to do with x equal to 0 or x equal to 1 that is independent of x. Similarly, we can do with n number of variables that is why something called an exist operation. So, what exist operation does basically it eliminates some of the variables from that function like for example, maybe I have some function called x 1 bar and some function called a is there 
and then you have some function called x1 and again a is there. So if you can easily find out that here basically this x1 is not very much required. So even if I fix it, I am going to get some BDD. The idea is basically say a Boolean, some Boolean function is there. We want to find out only that part of the function which does not get changed whether x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. Maybe we have a very big function, but only few terms will remain if x is either 0 or x is either 1. We want to bring up those terms. That is some part of the functions will remain, some, form the, some parts of the formulas will remain true whether x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. So, rest actually apply will bring it out. Like for example, as I told you x equal to 1 means that part of the BDD which is true if x equal to 1 x equal to 0 means that is restrict operation that part of the BDD which is true when x is equal to 0 or it. So, the resultant BDD will be something which is true if x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1 that is actually called the apply operation and apply operation basically eliminates some of the variables. So, now basically this one as you have seen what it does it represents something called x something called x prime and where phi is equal to true. And as I told you, it is represented in terms of some variables like x1, x2, x1 bar, some of these terms actually it is there. Now, we have to just retain these terms, we have to eliminate these terms. So, basically what we have to do, we have to apply x bar. Here x bar means basically all the terms which are in the inverted form, like if x1, x2, x3 prime are all available. So, you have to apply x1 prime, x2 prime and x3 prime. All the parts of the BDD you have to bring it out which are irrespective of x prime equal to 1, x prime equal to 0 and so forth. Then you are going to actually get this term out. So, basically that is what they are doing. So, x these are nothing but your vectors. So, if I am having these transitions if I apply x this that means for the time being you just understand that I am eliminating these parts only only those transitions will come out where x 1 and x 1 prime are irrelevant for them either 0 or 1 you are going to get the same thing. So, you are going to get this transition as a output. I will give you an example that will make the things very very clear. So, basically let us see that x prime and x prime bar are nothing in this case if you see they are nothing but your basically your state variables and prime version is the next state variables. So, first what we do uh, consider a set of state x and represent b x, b x is the subset of states where the formula is true we are representing this vector. Now, basically what we do basically we have the b x bar is the next state okay, and then b x is the present state. So, here we will have all the non prime variables, here we will all have the prime variables. So, that is so this is actually they are represented by x bar. Now, basically what you are doing say when you are going for the apply operation. So, what is it is doing basically apply operation is trying to get you a state called as I told you x 2 x bar and this phi is equal to 2 and it will have variables from both x and x bar because at this state transition representation is involving both uh, prime and non prime versions. Now, we have to just bring it this, this state that is the state from which the next state is x prime where phi is equal to 2. That means, we have to somehow eliminate the prime variables. So, that is why we are going for the exist operation on the primes. That is, we are going to find out transitions which leads to 1 in the BDD which is irrelevant of the prime variables. That is, x 0, x 1, x 1 prime can be any variable, but that has to be 1. So, basically if you are going for this one, it will make the BDD independent of all the prime variables. So, therefore, P of x by this formula will give me the state this one. Slightly involved, just think on it, you will get the idea. That is, first we are trying to find out a subset of states called x 5, where the x bar where phi is equal to 2. Then, if you are going to apply this state subset BDD, if you multiply with the transition subset of the transition represented BDD, of course, you are going to have such transitions which lead to a state called x prime where phi is equal to 2. This is what you are going to get after this apply operation, but and this is actually your x. Now, we just want this and not the other part, this one you have to eliminate. So, this is done by basically your exist operation, which exist operation as I told you, we eliminate out some of the variables which you do not want to be in that one. So, all the prime variables are removed and you are going to get the answer. Example, this one you have to slightly go back and uh, look at the literature or the text will be uploading on the existence operations, restrict we have already discussed and then it will be very clear to you. So, now let us assume that some proposition called x 1 capital x 1 or for the time being you can also call phi whatever you want is true only in state s 2. So, what I have to do? I have to represent your b d d x is nothing but your s 2. So, this is the subset which is actually b x. So, if you see x it is actually nothing but x x 0 prime you see this is x 0 prime and x 1 and x 1. So, basically 0 and 1 is leading to 1. So, this subset is represented by 
this one. And of course, as I told you, we have to now go for a representation of the next state because it's, we require something like this, sorry, we require finally something like this. This is what is your answer basically finally. We need to represent x2, s2 bar basically because the next state should be something like this. So, which is means in this form s2 transitions pointing to this has to be measured. So, it is something like this. Fine. Now, this is the transition relation. This is the transition relation for this bookie automata. Huh, this is the transition relation for this. Sorry, this is the transition relation I have already shown you. So, anyway, I am not going to uh, just show, we may maybe we can just see there is a self loop between 0, 0 to 0, 0. The self loop, just we see that whether it is here. So, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, if you look at it, so it is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, it is going to be a 1, that means this transition is represented by this path. So, basically this is nothing but the whole transition representation of this whole bookie automata. If you can recollect, I have you can see that will be represented in this manner. I have just shown you one path which corresponds to this self loop. So, now we have this basically. Next is nothing but we have to make a product. So, what is the product? This B transition and this state X. So, that means this is your state and the whole state transitions you are Producting. So, what you are going to have? You are only going to have this two transitions into picture. So, let me just see if we can look at it. This is nothing but x0 bar, x1 and self loop. So, basically the next state is s2. So, only that those things should remain because we are producting s2 next state with the whole transition diagram. So, it is nothing but x0 just let me connect it x0 bar x1, x0 bar x1 and of course, the next state was present state x 0 bar and x 1. So, that is the self loop that will remain because the next state is s 2 that is what we are trying to look because our goal is next state is s 2 and we are producting with the whole set of transitions. So, only two transitions will remain like in this case this is your next state which is your set subset and then you are producting with the end this is your next state which has to be true and you are producting with all transitions. So, only this and these two transitions qualify. So, let me just trace one transition. So, x 0 0 fine, then x 0, x 0 fine and x 0 bar is this way, then uh, x 1. So, I am going to here and then basically uh, x 1 bar equal to 1. So, this is the 1 and you can see this is 1. So, that self proof is represented by this path. Similarly, you can track out all the paths which is leading to 1 by this methodology. Right? This is one path will be there and this will be another path which will be corresponding to this only two paths should be one because only two transitions qualify. So, this is one path which I have already shown you and there is another path. So, there will be only two paths leading to one which is captured by the PDD. Now, what we have to do? So, this, this basically represents the two transitions where the next state is S 2 where phi is equal to true. Next thing you have to do is very simple. You have to eliminate out all the prime. So, this level has to be eliminated and this level has to be eliminated. So, that means we have to find out the BDD which does not change whether this one is 0 or 1 or this one is 0 or 1. Basically, you are going to find out something like this. So, this is nothing but the state S1 and S2. You can easily see. So, this one will be nothing but your state S1 and S2. If you just do the apply operation over exist operation over there, you will find out. So, S1 and S2 will be there. So, like if you want to see this is 1 0. So, let us see 1 0 we can track. So, there will be two states basically. So, 1 0 this is one state and this is 0 1. So, S 1 S 1 and S 2 are the two states. So, two paths which is 1 and all this are 0. So, very easily you can go for the labeling algorithm which tells that E x phi that is nothing but S 2. So, we have seen first state we label it represent the next state that is S 2 this B D D this is your uh, whole transition structure product it you are going to get only those transitions which are leading to S 2. So, this is one path and another path will be this one and then we go for this exist operations that we are removing all the prime variables and this is nothing but your state S 1 and S 2. So, this by this way we have shown how E x can be easily operated or easily obtained from a model checking from symbolic model checking without explicitly modeling the bookie automata in terms of states we model in some terms of BDD and we go. Just before we close how to go for the for all? This is very simple, just the dual of it. So, what we do is that. So, basically, we take S is the entire set, and then what we do? We take the P of 
x minus s and we do it. So what is the idea? Basically s is all the set of states of all transitions x and x is the subset of states under interest. That means we want to find out say these are the states maybe where phi is equal to true and we have to find out a state where all transitions are going to this one. So rather what we do we try to find out some states y where one transition is basically going to some other states where phi is equal to false that is the phi prime. So we are going to try to find out that is nothing but your s minus x. You are trying to find out all states basically from where there is a transition which goes to some other state where phi is not equal to true. Then we go for the same existential operation that is we are going to try to find out all states from where there is at least one path where phi is not equal to true. That means those states should not belong to this category because the category is all states from all states from where all paths leading to next state where phi is equal to true. So what we will try to do? We will try to find out all states because we know how to solve the existential quantifier because we know that pre exist x we already know how to do. We will be using this to find out this for all. So what we are trying to do? We will try to find out all states y where there is at least one path to a next state where phi is equal to false. And that is the states which does not qualify our requirement. S minus x will give you the answer. So that is what is being written in the slide. Very simple, just the dual of it. You can easily find this out. Because already we know that existential is simple to solve and how we can find out for all. That is states S, x where for where in all for all the next state phi is equal to 2, all transitions. So thus we do in the negated way, we find out all states from where there is at least one path because existentially we know where phi is not equal to 2. Though those you remove remove from S, your, your job is basically done. So that is what is written in the algorithmic steps. So basically this brings us to the half part of the lecture on symbolic monologic because already we have seen Ex and maybe all Ax. So this one actually corresponds to Ax. Ex means there exists a path when in next state phi is equal to 2. The other one, this one actually corresponds to Ax. All paths where next state phi is equal to 2. But there are so many Eu, Au future, global, so, so many other constructs were there, LTL means temporal, temporal formulas are there. We will next class, we will try to see all of them and how we can solve by the same approach. Modeling the states, substates where phi is true, then producting with your basically your transition function and then exactly what the algorithm has to be followed. Thank you.